imagine you have a third degree burn and you have things that either get close to you, touch you, even you get a whiff of air. It's sort of that feeling of super intense. That's how it is for us with borderline. It's like we have a third degree burn, but with emotions. You could feel upset. We feel infuriated. You can feel depressed. We feel majorly depressed. And so everything is sort of magnified, just like it is with a third degree burn. My whole life, I felt like I didn't have a voice. The reality of that is that's the story of a lot of people with BPD. I was really small. I was probably like seven or eight years old and I would find myself having anxiety attacks in the hallway and when my mom would drop me off. Um, it got to the point where they thought like, I, I don't really like to use this word, but it was like I was possessed. A symptom that is associated with BPD is uh, intense and unstable personal relationships. And I've seen that throughout my entire life. My parents never really understood the disorder, and that comes with frustration. I think it speaks to a lot of my friendships and a lot of my um, intimate relationships. It actually felt like the whole world was against me and that nobody understood me. When I was in one of my darkest moments, which have been common the last five or so years. One of them was, you know, when I was here, um, I was home alone and I just, to put into perspective how intense things feel when you when you're, you live with BPD, is I had gotten into a fight with a friend and it felt so intense that like life wasn't worth living. And I, I was home alone and I called my mom and I'm like, well, this is it. And I don't remember a lot that happened. I just remember waking up in a hospital room with, in a hospital bed in a gown. At that point, it's when I vowed to myself that I would never be here again and I would never want to make my parents feel that way. But more so, like, I would never want to feel that way again. When I was in that emergency room, you know, Everybody was relying on each other, and that really was a testament to how everyone in my family is there for me, despite how alone I feel. Yeah. I know Chelsea got me a gift certificate, so you could tell me, Justin. She ruined all the surprises. No. Yes. Mom, you know I can't lie. So if you're going to say that's what you got me, obviously it's going to show no, on my face. This is how the story went. So, which gift certificate did you buy me? <laughs> <laughs> so, of course you know she got your gift certificate. I can't, I can't. I There's can't never any surprise. Eh? It's like, ah, oh, you got me a gift certificate. I didn't know. Yeah, of course. For my whole life, I thought in black and white. And I was always on the either extreme and I never really understood the gray area and I never understood how people sort of live in this gray area. I always heard that the saying, recovery is not linear. And for a very long time, I did not believe that. When my mom had found um, my current psychologist, it was sort of like a miracle. You have severe borderline personality disorder and how has this not been diagnosed in you yet? Because you fit nine out of the nine criterias. And I was like, wow, good to know. Like, thank you for actually validating how I was feeling inside that the world seemed so intense and daunting. I've been doing well, like reassuring myself that I've been doing like, you know, like I'm doing the best that I can and like it's been working. 
and that like this is just like temporary kind of thing that's like too that's what, what's been helping me a lot to like yeah cope with I it. love that this is temporary this is a snapshot of my life right now and it doesn't mean it's always going to be this difficult or this challenging I think it's important to have a therapeutic relationship in which you feel like you are constantly being supported and that you won't be abandoned, especially for people with borderline uh, personality disorder. She helped me understood that what I was feeling was valid and that the way my emotions were reacting and the way that I was feeling made sense for somebody who struggled with borderline. Her mentality is living in the gray zone and that really has applied to my life and applied to my recovery. And so she's taught me a lot about understanding my disorder and understanding who I am as a person and appreciating that. My mom was my voice. She was my greatest advocate. She took what I was, even if she didn't understand it, she took what I was saying seriously because my actions showed how serious it was. Just look where you're going because here it's going to show you the sidewalk and you're going to hit it if you don't go the right way. She's teaching me how to drive right now and that takes a lot of patience. And that's funny because we recently took the highway and she was like, she was like holding the wheel. I'm like, how does this teach me? <laughs> she was holding the steering wheel. I'm like, how does this teach me? It's, it's like, all down here, eh? It's a school zone. They take away your permit. So you'll get your BMW, which is bus metro walk. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Italian mothers, what can you do? <laughs> I've had friends who have gone, come and gone, and now today I have friends who accept me for who I am. My childhood friend, uh, Vanessa, who I met in elementary school, she's iconic. She is the definition of energy times like 500. Like, positivity and like energy just radiates out of this human being. And she's one of the, people or the person in my life that has taught me to really enjoy the intensity of the moment because that's how she sees it like this is how I feel on the inside and I have somebody who is cool with feeling it on the outside icon my 13th birthday Correct. oh yeah that neon green top of mine oh that's wow we love that oh, that's no. the one I think my journey and my story is a true testament to my strength and my resilience and the progress that is possible in recovery. And that's why I think doing things like sharing my story is crucial because if I had somebody to look up to when I was in my darkest moment and somebody who understood all of this intensity and all of this darkness and all of this pain, I would have felt so m more so much more understood and supported and you know as somebody who is studying psychology my goal is in the future one to treat people with vpd two to make it accessible a lot of people with vpd are misunderstood because it's they think we fit into a box but in reality we are way outside of that box and having resources that will accept us with open arms and be like we got you, like, yeah, we know you struggle with BPD, but we're not gonna like reject you. We're not gonna cherry pick you. We're going to accept you and we're gonna give you the undivided and unconditional support that you need to have your voice be heard. I wanna be an advocate for other people who don't have a voice. And you know, they post on social media that they're struggling and they feel like they have no way to get help. I wanna be that voice that'll be like, here, I got you.